I'm Joe Dante. This is Trailers from Hell. I saw a lot of movies in the 60s and when I was in college, and a lot of them were in grindhouses on Market Street in Philadelphia, uh, where I would usually wait until a movie had been out for a month or so, and then they would start to appear in the grindhouses on the triple bills, and uh, we'd get in for like, you know, 25 cents, 50 cents, see three pictures if you didn't mind the snoring. Uh, the Prize was not exactly a grindhouse movie, but that was where I saw all my, all my movies. What was your first reaction when you received the news of your Nobel Prize? Uh, no reaction at all. I was dead drunk at the time. Oh. <laughs> a big box office hit in its day, the prize is a paradigm of the slick mid-60s major studio Hollywood movie. It features a star-studded international cast based on a Cold War bestseller, it's set in an exotic locale and revolves around a world-famous event, the awarding of the Nobel Prize. I'm Miss Ingelisa Anderson of the Swedish Foreign Ministry, assigned to you for your stay here in Stockholm. Hello. Hello. Uh, I have a car waiting outside. Will you follow me, please? Excuse me. Things are looking up, and I didn't want to come to Stockholm. This is not on the Nobel schedule, Mr. Craig. I think you should be prepared to make unscheduled flights, Miss Anderson. And tellingly, although it takes place in Stockholm, none of the cast ever ventured further than the Culver City backlot. All the location material was filmed by a second unit with doubles. Paul Newman stars in Bruce Willis smirk mode as a hard-drinking writer who cynically views his Nobel Prize as an excuse to raise his price, but becomes involved in a plot to replace German physics prize winner Edward G. Robinson with a double. Will there be anything else tonight, sir? I hope so. And who's that breathtaking blonde? It couldn't be anyone else than seductive new star, Elka Sommer. I've been beside myself all night. I wish I could be beside yourself all night. For every blonde, there must be a brunette. How old are you? Why? I don't know. I mean, most of the girls in this place are... You look as though you ought to be in bed. I accept. Diane Baker is the brunette whose beauty is at bewildering variance with her sinister behavior. With Robinson is great as ever, subtly modulating his performance as the scientist and his imposter. Pouty Elky Summer and sexy Diane Baker are appropriately enticing. Kevin McCarthy and Sergio Fantoni get some good moments as rival scientists. And Leo G. Carroll, furthering the Hitchcock connection, is long-suffering as the Nobel coordinator. What seemed fresh and clever in 1963 plays today as a bit more labored, partly because today's audience is more attuned to screenwriter Ernest Lehman's borrowings from his own script for North by Northwest. And director Mark Robeson, a talented craftsman, is no Alfred Hitchcock, and particularly shows it in a vignette where Newman must pretend to be a lecturer at a nudist conference, which is a pale shadow of the art auction scene in North by Northwest, while also evoking memories of the superior masquerade scene at the literary gathering in The Third Man. It's a fun movie, but the Swedish government was not amused. The Nobel Prize being used as a backdrop for cheap melodrama did not appeal to the Swedes. In a fury of excitement, suspense, and terror, heightened by never-ending villainies in which the scientists themselves are the prize. 